Hello there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hi, hi. Oh, I feel so teased right now. There's actually really good dinner being made. So once it's finished, I might want to run out and grab a bowl. It's chicken enchiladas. Black beans and rice. Yes, I did think about it for a second. But oh man, I want to eat that. But maybe I can resist, you know? Maybe I can just eat like room temperature food or warm it up. We'll see how I feel. But ah, oh, yes, a recap. So we went to this one place where they got, where a group got a fix the furnace as one do. And we met a really, really nice lady, very, very pretty, at at the cafe. Yes, indeed, she's best girl. And of course, the main group is working on fixing the furnace. But unfortunately, there's not much help because of the bank. Oh, the bank. But we'll find out what happens next in CV-3 Tricks. Tricks are for kids. Okay, there's... Three entrances, one exit. Oh, one exit, I love it. It's probably something I shouldn't be saying, but I'm saying it nonetheless. But yeah, without further ado, cause food. You're gonna take out a loan from the bank? Have you lost your mind? What's your plan then, wise guy? How do we reckon? How do you reckon we get into trials in just a few days? This clinical trial is Tibby's last chance. I'll think of some other way. Oh, what other way? No way we're getting that kind of money without a loan. R right. Didn't we get health insurance for Tibby before? That should cover his serious illness. What the hell do you think I was doing all day yesterday? I went to the bank to cash out the insurance, but Tibby's illness wasn't covered at all. Oh, that sucks. I'm begging you, please. Let's not jump straight into taking out a loan, okay? How bad are loans here? Just think about your sister. She only took out a small loan, but it ruined her life. Remember how much she suffered until finally. H how bad are loans? That, that scares me. Her entire family died on their way to the frontier. So calm down and think this through. There's gotta be another way. Sheesh. Why do I see this stuff every damn time I... I come to the bank. All the more reason for us to be here. And especially for us to attend this so-called welcoming party, Franca. If we don't witness these things with our own eyes, we'll forever remain left in the dark. Ooh, hello, hello. Is Fort Baron going to... going to tow David's... Davis Town back to its original route all by itself. This request was made directly by the regional government. The outcome will affect Black Steel's image and credibility. We'll give this mission our all. Good to hear. We appreciate it. All part of the job. Would the two of you like to? He would the two of you like beer or champagne? We're out in the sticks, so you may find our selection rather unsatisfactory. All I ask is that you please bear with us. Unsatisfactory? You're too humble. Take a look, Captain. This beer has no label on the bottle, but it's just as good as any niche brand from a craft brewery. The champagne's also high-end. I must say, excellent taste. It's important to keep some luxury items on hand when you're stationed in a difficult area. We do have to keep up morals, after all. I mean, morale, after all. Is cranking up the thermostat so high that people want to crack open an ice-cold beer also part of keeping up morale? Well, yes. As you've noted, we do have a separate backup energy supply, which includes heating and electricity. Funny how no one else seems to have this backup system. That will be due to the, the prescience of our first president during the early planning and development phases. An important safety consideration. The services provided by a financial institution are somewhat unique. Large amounts of money flow in and out, and be it systems or resources, it's always better to be more self-reliant. Presumably, Blacksteel built their safe house here in Davistown out of the very same concerns. Isn't that right, Miss Franca? Uh-oh, I'm fine with just a glass of water. I'll leave the beer for your employees to keep up morale. 
we've sent people back to Blacksdale HQ to report on the repair status of Davistown's power plant. As the plant has not been restored to, to a state where it can support navigation, HQ will naturally have to formulate a new solution. We are very appreciative of your company's contributions to our town. However, until a solution is in place, we do have one humble request. Ah, uh, a humble request, eh? What sort of request? Hmm, if I would buy a gun from Black Steel, what kind of gun would I want? Well, 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 let's see how I would describe it. Pew, pew. As in, I'd want lasers. We were hoping you could help maintain law and order here. I'm sure you've already encountered bandits on the on the town's outskirts. They've caused us they've caused us a substantial amount of damage. Even more troubling is the fact that a number of people living here are, to put it nicely, bandits themselves. To put it less nicely, they're the bandits reserve army. We would be very grateful if you could clear them out of Davis Town. Here's a list of names. Over the past few days, we've sent personnel to conduct security operations over the plate's perimeter. Based on the reports, I have little reason to believe that so many dangerous elements are operating here. There are people here with no money, yet are unwilling to put in the work to pay back their debts. How can you guarantee they won't resort to more... desperate measures down the line? If you insist, we'll look into it. You look into it? Why must you verify it yourselves? You can't take us at our word. If our trust is so fragile that it's broken just by double-checking a list, then it wasn't worth much to begin with. Do as you please, then. But if you really want to check things, be sure to be thorough. It's like, what? You don't believe us? But why? Why wouldn't you believe me, the faceless lady? How'd it go? Any developments on your end? Mm, the target's already entered visual range. Seems like he's not the only one here. Is he working with someone? Seems to be someone from the plate. Woodrow, sir, is that possible? Anything's possible. When the government here collapsed, some youngins with too much time on their hands formed gangs and started making trouble all over the place. But... What do they hope to accomplish by colluding with the bandits out in the barrens? Jessica, they're about to disperse. Should we arrest them? What do you think, Woodrow? Wait and see. Now's not the time. Then, um, don't do anything for now. Record where they showed up and contact me if they show up here again. Alright, no problem. One sec. Which direction do the bandits go? I'm going to follow them and have a look. They went southeast. Should I come with you? Nah, I can handle this myself. Head back for now. Okay, good luck. Er, Jessica, is a gentleman someone from the plate? Um, he's been investigating these bandits on his own, so he should be able to help us out. I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how to break this to you, but I feel like you need a reminder. Getting cozy with the locals rarely works out well. Why is that? Places like Davistown don't just go on like normal after getting reclaimed by the government. They've always got other plans on the on the docket. And when the time comes, the businesses, the infrastructure, even the residents will be replaced. Replaced? Then then what happened to the original residents? Where do they go? I don't know how Black Steel usually handles it, but with my last employer, we were only responsible for kicking them out. What happened afterwards was none of our business. How could they not care? That's totally illegal. How could they just drive out all the locals? Huh. <sighs> There's always an excuse when it comes to places like this on the verge of bankruptcy. Like bad deaths, tax investigations, security concerns. Deaths. Not just me. Everyone left here is in debt. Huh. <sighs> How do I put this? Well, I'll just give it to you straight. You asked about a guy who walked into the snowfield earlier, right? It's probably because of his debts. That kind of stuff happens all the time here. After being forced into bankruptcy, he had no choice but to. Ooh, hello, hello. Jessica? Hey, Jessica! What's gotten into you? I... 
I'm heading back first. Oof. Good luck, Jessica. That stubborn good-for-nothing father of yours started your day. Huh? What nonsense are you spewing? Let go of me! Is that a child's voice? Uh-oh. This brat sure knows how to whine. Guess he needs a, a gag and a good beating before he'll learn how to follow us obediently. Stop right there! Let go of him! And why should I? Who the hell are you? Oh, it's Benny. Help, they're trying to kid at me. Don't make me repeat myself. Let go of the kid. His father's in so much debt that... That even selling off the boy wouldn't pay it all back. So what if we kidnap him? Deb, are you here to collect debts? Well, don't tell me you're working for the bank. Mind your own damn business. Now get out of here. Help, someone save me. Shut your damn mouth. Oof. Ugh. <coughs> Last warning. Let the kid go and don't make any rash moves. Otherwise, my next bullet won't be just a warning shot. Shh. Playing hardball, huh? Let's get out of here. No point risking our lives over this damn brat. You okay, Benny? <sighs> What's your name? Where do you live? I can take you back home. I'm Benny, and you can just leave me at the diner. My dad's there every night, so I can I can wait for him there. Is your dad... Leon Thurman? How'd you know? I've met him. All right. Those people back there were talking about his debt. Were they debt collectors sent by the bank? Um, at first, uh, it was just collection letters. Then they started sending people to our house to cause trouble. And my dad chased them out, and this time, the bank probably wanted to use me to force him to pay them back. They might be with the bank, actually, unfortunately. But that's clearly a crime. Who's gonna stop them? There's no police here. Ah, and there's no police here either. Yeah, probably with the bank in this case. Can you show me your dad's bills? I might be able to help. You... are you serious? His bills are something awful. Jessica's rich. That might not be anything to her. I took a gander and... There ain't a whole lot more that we can do for the old tower this time around. I still love Miles' beanie. Look at it. Sucks. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just so funny. I already told you, the lower girl did a great, a great job tidying things up and fixing what could be fixed. But you just had to come out here yourself. Just wanted to see if there's anything Blacksteel missed that we could handle. What, you think they're going to pay off your loans if you work overtime? I can dream, can't I? You're better off praying for Goldilocks. I mean, you're better off paying for gold backs to fall from the sky. I told you, your only lifeline at this point is selling off all three shares you've got in the mine. No. I know you blew your life savings and took out loans to get those shares, but... Hell no! Then let me ask you, how much debt is... Is that payment from Blacksville still even gonna clear? I reckon it's nowhere close to even paying off the interest. How about this then? Help me with the plant maintenance. We'll be able to keep it running off of the fuel that Blacksteel brought. I also happen to have a few days off. I'll pay you with the money Blacksteel gave me, and that'll buy you some time at the bank, at least. Ooh, hello, hello. No, Miles. You earned that money. Besides, how's that any different from just giving it away? Not like this, not like that. Sounds to me like you've got an excuse to say, to, to say no to everything. It ain't gonna matter when you're bankrupt, and the bank's stealing the shirt off your back. There's gotta be a way. How much... How much are they having to pay an in interest? That is terrifying. Beer, electricity, security deposit, 
Everything looks fine, and it's within the range of what I can cover. Beer? Beer? How much did he spend on beer? What you can cover? Are you gonna pay off Leon's debt? If possible, yes. Dad's more afraid of owing favors than anything else. When my brother passed away, he couldn't even afford a funeral. And when people offered to lend him money, he said he didn't want to be treated like a beggar. So he ended up following Uncle Woodrow out around outside, logging, hunting, fin catching. He worked so hard those two months that, that when he came back, his fingers were deformed. And how much money did he make from all that? About two or three thousand? Oh! That is a lot of hard work for that much. Like, holy cow. He'll never pay off his... He'll never pay back his debts like that. Wait, what? He's still one of the mine's shareholders? Forget it. After the mine shut down, he had to pay all kinds of fuel fees, vacancy fees, and land management fees just to keep his shares. And he borrows piles of money from the bank every year to do it. Th that's practically an open wound there. They're bleeding him dry with. Even if I came in to help him, there's no way he'd be able to pay it off. If he doesn't dump those shares, he's going to have nothing left. Not happening. Dad loves that mine more than anything. He'd never dump those shares, even if we both got sent to the frontier for hard labor. Benny, don't talk about your father like that. By the way, Jessica, what's gotten into you all of a sudden? Is something wrong? Leon's still... A shareholder in the mine, so the bank's not likely to make him declare bankruptcy anytime soon. Hmm, hmm. If I was here. It depends, uh, like, on the weather. If it's. If it's winter, like over here right now, I would not want to go into the wastelands. No, 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 no. But if it was decent weather, I'd consider going into the wastelands because I'd be like, yeah, no, at this point, I'm gonna just move somewhere else. Goodbye, Davistown. Smell you later. Because that's like, they're probably huge, huge, huge number of debt, which is scary. I saw someone try to kidnap Benny today. To force Leon to pay off his debts. Kidnapping? They can go after Leon all they want, but try to kidnap a teenage boy. Have they no shame? Benny, you're staying with me for now. When Leon finds out about his kid finds out his kid's missing, I'll give him a piece of my mind and ask him what the hell he's doing as a father. No, don't tell him. I don't want him to worry. We've gone way past making him worry. He needs to know damn well the consequences of what he's doing. I- I still need to go home. Girl, How can such a stubborn asshole have a kid as sweet as you? In any case, if he's willing to share- to sell his shares, then that, combined with some tax rebates and preferen- and preferential po policies he never noticed, should be enough to cover the debt. You sure? I- I can practically guarantee it. Alright, sounds like he just needs a good reminder to stop messing around. I like how Helena went full anti-mode. It's finally over. So, what's the main switch for the entire building? Located... I mean, so why is the main switch for the entire building located just a hundred steps from the front entrance? Is this also some great prescience from the bank's, from the bank's founder? That's ridiculous. It doesn't make a lick of sense. One step, two steps, three steps. There's a desk seven paces out. Then make a left turn. 24, 25, 26. Oops, bumped into a lamp. 57, 58, 59. 100. I wonder if they made her learn the steps. Excuse me. Can I help you? Is the bank so open? I, I'd like to take out a loan. Sylvia, get over here, Sylvia, quick. I'd like to borrow some money from the bank. Can I count on you to get me a slightly better interest rate? Oh, I, I should never have been so mean to you. Ooh, hello, hello. What, 
What are you doing here? Wait, you. What are you doing here? I'm sorry, you two, but we're, but we're not open for business today. Seeing the couple stare at each other in silence, Sylvia bows her head and steps away from the bank's gates. Run, Sylvia, run! The whole way back, the thick darkness that even the streetlights do not penetrate lingers with her, caressing her neck affectionately. Since her mother passed away, she's left work the same way every day, just like this. 1,877, 1,878, and home. Sheesh! Mom, I'm home. Welcome home. She waits for a long time, but only silence greets her back. Welcome home. After a moment, she takes out her keys, opens the door, wipes the soles of her feet, I mean her shoes on the doormat, and leaves the suffocating darkness in the street behind her. Hmm, if Jessica pays off someone's debt, would it make any difference for me if she used her family's money, her own money? Nah, not really. Money's money. So in Kia Yoiro! Sento Jumida! Like heck, even if it was even if she used her family's money, it's It'd basically kind of be like using her allowance versus money that she made herself. And let me put people down. Making my life easier for farming later. I saved my stamina for this day. So then that way, I would be able to just easily do a thing. As one do, of course. Make my life easier, please. Okay, I'll let that guy go forward. Because this be fine. This be fine, totally fine. Hmm. Let's see, how do I want to place her? Eh, not really big. Oh, I did it nonetheless. Oops. Oh well, no regrets. We don't have regrets here. What are those? Yeah, this be fine. Mm -hmm, totally fine. Okay, and then... Oh, it's these scary dudes. Bunk. Okay, let's get rid of them. Yeah, no fear. And just for fun, might as well just recover some costs because why not? And even more over here, as one do. Okay, that guy can walk forward now. And now just a little bit more. Hmm, I might be able to get these guys here. Hey. That worked out perfectly. All according to plan. Convincing Leon to, send it to sell shares. Not happening. Count me out. Why? Aren't you two friends? Sure, but we wouldn't be if I forced him to do stuff like that. We've all tried talking to him about the shares, but the stubborn bastard won't listen. Is there really no way to get through to him? Nope. Uh, and here I was thinking that... If only you talk to him for me, then... Then what? Th then I give you this box of chocolates as a thank you. <laughs> I like that. It's like, okay, fine. I'll do it for the chocolate. Chocolates, huh? The patisserie back home gave me these when I set out. Said I'd have something to chew on whenever my mouth was empty. And now, this is the last box. I, um... I'm really, really reluctant to give this away. So since you don't want to, forget it. Hmm. Did he just respond with a grunt? That's different. If you don't want to help, then, um, no chocolate for you. Er, that came out wrong. Um. 
Okay, I confess. It was Helena who suggested I bring you chocolates. She said that you have a soft spot for them. <laughs> oh, Jessica. Being so honest about Helena, though. I like Helena. She's like, I know his weakness, girl. Bring out the chocolates. <laughs> yeah, they've been together a lot. Then again, he was the one that she was supposed to give the bullet to, so it's fine if they're gonna hang out a bunch. She told you to come, and here you are. Leon's situation is looking really bad. I have to try everything I can, no matter what it takes. Woodrow stares at... Woodrow stares straight at Jessica, but she didn't notice. She's completely lost in her embarrassment and frustration. Her head droops as she furiously racks her brain to figure out how to navigate this conversation faster. Sorry to keep pestering you. I'll head back for now and think of some other way myself. Just leave the chocolates on the cabinet. Huh? Give me a moment to pack up and wash my face. Then we're leaving. He's like, yeah, that's the good stuff. I need it. He's agreeing to it, even though I, I totally blew my secret? Does he care about his image with Helena that much? Or is it the chocolate? Or, well, whatever. All that matters is that he agreed. This place probably never has chocolate, so... I understand, I love chocolate too. The cabinet. The cabinet. Oh, is this the one? The drawer is open. The objects in the old Sanctus drawers resemble him. Simple and unadorned. A belt, a holster, and a pair of fingerless gloves. Jessica sets the box of chocolates down and notices a few pieces of paper pressed beneath the gloves. Eroded by time, the pages have taken on a brittle, yellow complexion. Jessica knows that she shouldn't look, but can't tr control her urges to sneak a peek. Is this... a photo of Woodrow and the boss? There's another Sancta too. And a piece of paper under the photo. It is an identification document. The black ink is hard to make out on the brown parchment. And only a few words really readily stand out. Camp, call us. You done putting away the chocolates? Oh, uh, y yes. By the way, I... Then let's get going. Aw, they were friends. Leon, your financial situation is in dire straits. If you drag your feet any longer, then... When the bank declares you unable to repay your debt, you'll be forced to declare bankruptcy. And by that point, you won't be able to save your shares or your house. If you insist on holding on to your shares, you'll be forced to sell off your house and won't even have a roof over your head. Plenty of people will try to talk to me into selling my shares, but you're the first to make a good case for selling my house. No, I'm not telling you to sell your house. I'm just reminding you of the consequences. If you don't mind, I can also... um. Mm, what I mean is, I, I have some money I can give you to help pay off your loans. Even though it's no small amount. What? Thanks and no thanks. I don't need your charity. N no, I mean, I'll let it to you. B but but I, I won't charge any interest. You can pay back at your leisure whenever your financial situation has improved. Look, Jessica. I'm a grown-ass man with both my hands and feet. I don't need a little girl half my age lecturing me on how to improve my life. I hope you never bring this up to me again. Bring up the sun. Bring up Benny. Wait, L Leon, but please don't push me. Huh. What? You're out here sipping tea, Woodrow. It's already gone cold. Just take the girl with you when you go. Aren't you gonna say something, Woodrow? You agree to this. Did I? Huh? All I said was that I'd come with you, so I did. Thanks for the chocolate, Jessica. Now, if you excuse me. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you can't do this. At this rate, Leon's gonna be left with nothing to his name. So what? Try as you like. When you burn a wet piece of coal, all you get is a face full of ashes. How could you? You... Yeah, he did say he was gonna talk to him about that. It's like, yeah, I'll go with you for the chocolate. Captain, are we seriously going to go through the entire list? 
How many doors have we knocked on so far? Fourteen. Other than the second household, where the middle-aged man's son did in fact run off to join the bandits, the rest are all honest people guilty of nothing more than being unable to pay off their debts. The bank didn't dig up any dirt on them, so they've resorted to using us to run them out of town. Despicable. And this is number 15. We'll check just one more and then... Wait, what's going on? Why are you sitting outside? My head, it's spinning. Oomph, go sit outside in the cold, you crusty old fossil. The headache will go away on its own. Could he have been poisoned? Lucky we found out in time, and we're both just fine. Ma'am, I thought the plate... I... I sh it should have retained its basic heating functions, so why? After the bank declares bankrupt, they shut off all the heating to her house. Without sunlight, it gets even colder inside. Why else would anyone light their fireplace? <coughs> Benny, you okay? I'm back, Benny. What what are you squatting inside of the Why are you squatting in front of the stove for? Get up already. The charcoal today is especially waterlogged. I've been trying to light it for a while now, but I can't get it burning at all. Just look at all the soot in your face. You'd think that you crawled out. You just crawled out of the mines. Hurry and whip it off. It ain't a big deal if you can't get it burning. Just wait until I get back. Dad, don't tell me you were in such a hurry this morning that you poured water directly on into the stove. Hey, I may be stupid, but I'm not that stupid. Hand me the tongs. I'll do it. <clears throat> you think I can't tell when you've when you're lost in the sauce? <laughs> lost in the sauce. Why are you blowing on it directly? Carl told me that you can't light the stove, which is why he entrusted it to me before he left. Since when have you done it? What else did Carl tell you? Everything about how you were so impatient that you that you poured an entire pail of water into the stove to douse the flames. Not only did the coal get ruined, but the bread Helena baked became inedible. She was so mad she chewed your ear off. What did he tell you all that? Who do you think left me all alone back then? Humph, left you all on all alone? What are you talking about? How would you even remember anything from when you were so little? All you did was sit in Woodrow's arms and tug on his beard. <laughs> Uncle Woodrow! I don't believe you. <clears throat> Who is it? Sorry, it's me. <clears throat> Eric, all this smoke. The stove's completely soaked on the inside. I've been trying to ignite the charcoal for a while now, but I haven't had much luck. Give me a moment. No problem. I can help out too. These pieces of charcoal are completely waterlogged. Can you swap them out? This is all the charcoal we've got from the caravan. Then, um, how about some firewood? We can put the broken pieces underneath to isolate the moisture. Then lean any thin branches against the stove to light them on fire. Then you just need to add more firewood as necessary. Life lessons from Jessica. Where'd you learn all that? On the battlefield? Why do you ask? Aren't you a mercenary? Um... It's done. Thanks for helping Benny light the stove, but you should leave now. But I haven't even said anything yet. I just don't understand. Why are you so stubborn about it? Of course you wouldn't. Then help me understand. I'll never give up if you just keep sending me away. Okay, now he's walking off. Jessica, I was abandoned here by my birth mother when I was just four years old. It was the miners here who raised me. When I enlisted in the army, I focused on learning blasting techniques so that I'd be able to help out in the mines. As soon as I was discharged, I came back and became a mining engineer. I was involved in the renovation and expansion of the mining tunnels below town. The factory above us and even the power plant we repaired a few days ago. The miners back then must have lived much better lives than they do now. If you told me back then what Davistown would become, 
I'd have figured you were cursing me out. True, life can be unpredictable like that. Later, I adopted my co-worker's kids, Benny and his brother Carl. And even later, the mine kept depreciating until all I could do was keep holding onto my shares no matter what. Like how I'd let those damn stakeholders take my life's work and dump it for scraps. But there's no way the mine is ever coming back. Just stop talking. I'm serious here. If you keep holding onto your shares, the bank is going to force you to pay off your debts. Get out of my house. Please, Leon. Even if you kick me out, you're going to have to come face to face with reality. Alright, Benny. Step out for a bit. You can stay at Andy and Auntie Helena's for a night. I'll come find you after Jessica and I finish talking. Wait, you can't send Benny away. Now you're trying to lecture me on how to be a parent. Yesterday. Just stop it already, Jessica. Not another word. Yesterday. Some gangsters hired by the bank went after your son. Is that true, Benny? Yes. Leon's heart constricts as he looks at Benny's soot-stained face. Why? Why don't you tell me anything? Even if I did, what good would it do? Would you march up to the bank and make a scene? What would that even solve? Hmm... Eh, I don't, I don't understand like the age thing when it comes to people being like, You're younger than me, I don't want to listen to you. Like that kind of thing I don't understand at all. It's like, so what? So what if they're younger? They could, they can be smart. Like why not? He just being stubborn. After seeing his child leave, the man who had been talking so confidently a moment ago immediately hunches his back and squats down by the stove. He picks up the tongs and carefully prods at the wood. Even though the flame is already burning brightly, a puff of black smoke still comes out and sends him into a fit of coughing. If I sell my shares at the mine, what'll I have left? At the very least, you won't leave Benny saddled with debt, and they won't take your house. First, it was Carl. After Carl left, it was... Benny, ever since I took on so much debt, I've been working from sunup to sundown, leaving the kids at home to fend for themselves. They were in charge of keeping the stove lit, and they had to handle the finances, and Benny was nearly kidnapped. In the end, I couldn't pay off my debts or protect the people I wanted to protect. I'm a right bastard, through and through. Leon smacks the stove hard with the tongs, hard enough to cause sparks to fly. I'd rather die than bow down to the savages at the bank. Just the thought that they'd, they'd have the gall to kidnap Be Benny makes you want to blow the whole damn place to bits. Leon. You said earlier that after I sell my remaining shares, I'll at least be able to leave the house for Benny. Mm-hmm. But you sure did a number on my stove just to win me over. <clears throat> you weren't kidding when you said you'd do anything. No, I didn't pour the water in there. I wouldn't go that far. Wait, if it wasn't you, then who? Stop. <laughs> Woodrow, what are you doing here? Woodrow doesn't answer. He simply walks right up to the stove and sets down a heavy-looking box. Leon walks over and sees the box stuffed haphazardly with charcoal pieces. Consider it an apology. Sorry for pouring water into your stove. Here you go, have some charcoal. Relax, Leon. The toes of your shoes are about to tear at the carpet. Oh, to tear the carpet. Relax. The word is no place here. I prepared all the, pr the promise to read documents and transfer contracts, so the bank should have nothing to say, of course. Benny helped me out a lot as well. The process shouldn't take very long, and I'll... And it'll all go smoothly. Would you like me to get you some water? No, I'm good. The fact that I can even stand here means I'm already mentally prepared to let it all go. I'm really sorry about this. Just leave me alone for a second. Now that I can single-handedly release them from, this, from those blood-sucking shareholders, with the swipe of a pen, I need a moment to myself so I can say goodbye. Jessica? Sylvia? Y yes, 
So, here's the deal. I took a sneak peek at the documents you prepared. Mr. Thurman's loan repayment is not within the scope of my job, but... Is this the part where we eat at the diner? We can always eat at the diner. In our heart. Cries. There are a number of issues with your reference data. The shares are overvalued, and there are some holes that don't add up in the end. You're still short by a considerable amount. I'd appreciate it if you could call him over for me, since there's no way I can face them. No, we're not going to put them on him right now. I'll make a check out to the bank, so can you keep it a secret for me, please? This much, in one lump sum? It's not a, it's not that big of a deal. Desperate times. But if Mr. Thurman found out, you know how prideful he can be. Which is why this is just between us. Nobody else needs to know. Please, Sylvia. Uh, okay then. Then can I take another look at your at your documents? I only have copies with me. That's good enough. Um, there are still areas that could use some adjustment. And then, there's a the tax return. Look. These are all- These are all items that could have been written off. 30 bucks here, 75 there. There's also a rather large deduction here. A full 400. Adding everything up, it comes to 1,329. Though that's- That's barely a fraction of the amount you have to make up for. You discovered all that just by casually thumbing through the documents? Um, this looks good enough. Th then, I'll directly report this and say that you, you filed a brand new application. Dang, Sylvia, smart. Finally, that should take care of the weight around Leon's neck. But he's far from the only one. I need to pick up the pace before Fort Baron arrives. Every person I help has to count for something, right? You do you, Jessica. Manager, we can close Leon Thurman's case. He finally decided to sell his shares. That obstinate bastard has sent us back. Sent us back for years. He was also extremely rude when selling them. Goading us with some rather colorful language and calling us kidnappers and so forth. But what can he do other than run his mouth? Well then, how about we pay him a direct visit next time? No need to rush. I heard someone advance the money for him. And now he is indeed debt-free. But once his shares are sold, there are plenty others circling the mine, waiting for us to swoop in. Ma'am, what are you plotting? Bank manager lady, why you gotta be so sus? Now there's the man who wasn't there. Okay, two entrance, one exit. Oh, that's fine. Now let's see how this goes. Oh, we're back at the diner. I feel weird saying this, but if the heating's still chugging along and the stove's lit too, why does it feel so cold? The bank's not up to something again, are they? I hung them up all night and my socks still ain't dry. Hmm, what's that noise? How many times have to tell you to shave, Woody? Every time you take a sip of water, you spill droplets all over the table. What are you on about? I ain't had a drink since I came in. Then where did all these water stains come from? Your diner's just getting old and, and rickety. Just like my brain these days. Like, am I remembering this wrong, or has there always been a huge water stain over there? Uh... The pipes? The water pipes ruptured? Oh my god. No way my rundown old floorboards can handle all this water damage. Go and turn off the valve, then look for something to catch the water leaking in. I'll take care of the things upstairs. Not the diner, I want to stay here. My poor waist. I can barely even stand up straight. How are things looking up there, Woody? I suggest you grab a chair and sit down before I tell you. You ain't as spry as you used to be. Spare me the theatrics and just lay it on me. 
I see it all by now. It's flooded up to my knees, and all the furniture is ruined. What about my clothes and the, and the wardrobe? Are they okay? Your favorite color is red, right? I hope this is good news. Mm, perfect. The water from the pipe's all rust-colored, so I'm guessing all your clothes will be, too. So, what the hell are you doing up there all this time? Grabbing all this. Oh, I almost forgot about this box. Where'd you find it? Where else? In the wardrobe. Not like you have anywhere else to hide stuff. I also grabbed a few things off your nightstand. <sighs> At least there's no water inside. Now let's take a look. Here's the insurance policy. Should cover today's damages. Also the deed to the land, the house, and... My passbook. Why are you still hanging on to that? You know you'll never touch none of that money. Would you throw it away if you were me? See? You get what I'm talking about, don't you? What he saved up all these years wasn't just the money. It was his conviction, too. Shh, sentimental old fool. We're all old fools here, Woody. Compared to the fickle future, the places of the past we've built up over the, the years hit that much closer to home. Says you. Look, it's the novel that was sitting on the nightstand, too. Ain't been open for the longest time. Well, hello. I feel pretty good today. The same old cliched love story about a rich girl and some farmer. Why you gotta be so grumpy? Ain't got nothing nice to say. I've got plenty, like, good luck at the bank tomorrow. You should thank your lucky stars I've mellowed with age. So, what about you? Any plans for tomorrow? Is Helena and Woodrow the same age? I'm gonna bring Jessica along to have a nice talk with someone. A talk? Yes, just a normal talk. Ah, yes, a normal talk, definitely. P put the gun down, yeah. If you got something to say, old man, I'm listening. What are you so scared of? If you ask me, I'm as gentle as they come. So you wanna chat, let's chat. You and the bandits out there have been meeting up in secret these last few days. How about you share what you talked about? Let go of me, old man. I said, I, I said... You spineless wimp. I... Give him the good kick, Jessica. Um, okay. Kick. What are you doing? Wiping your shoes on my pants? Forget it, Jessica. How's your aim? N not bad, I think. Perfect. Can you thread a bullet right between his ears? That's easy. Okay, threading a bullet between his ears. Like, okay, that's fine. Versus a kick. Arg. So, sorry, sir. My hand is still a bit shaky. But it's not like I hit you with the last one. So you can stop screaming. <laughs> it's fine. You'll get it after a few tries. Uh, all right. It, it it was it was what it was because they've been short on manpower these days so they're trying to recruit us i figured seeing how none of us in the plate can repair deaths anyway might as well have give some folks a chance to dig themselves out you're talking about converting people to a life of banditry it's it's not like i forced them or anything they're ready to jump ship before i even finish talking come on like i said what are you fellas so afraid of just tell me the truth Says the man waving a gun in my face. What if we say something that pisses you off? Where are those bandits hiding now? H how would I know? They're so damn slippery. That's enough, Jessica. Just let, us, just let us go already, old man. You can take anything you want from this room, please. Color me surprised. These punks actually have some pretty nice stuff. Even got some bottles of beer and champagne in the corner. Ah, beer and champagne in the corner, huh? I wonder where they got that from, cough, cough, the bank. Did we seriously just let them walk away scot-free? All I care about is finding those missing people. 
If these pink, if these punks want to leave the plate, that's their call. I ain't gonna judge him for it. But I think. Want something to drink? I think I'll pass. Hmm, mellow, full-bodied fragrance of hops and a refreshing aftertaste. Where the hell did they get such quality booze? Might as well take that all as presents for everyone else. My sincere apologies, Helena, ma'am. After the preliminary review and discussion, we cannot accept your compensation application. The damage to the water pipes in your incident photos is clearly man-made. Man-made? What? Wait, you mean someone's messing with us again? Considering your restaurant's revenue and liabilities, we have ample reason to believe that you deliberately damaged your own water system to cash out on the insurance plan. You think the insurance is fraud? No, ma'am. We're simply saying that it's reasonable con that it's a reasonable conclusion to make. As long as you can provide prof professional proof that eliminates the possibility, we'll be able to move on to the claims process. How the hell am I supposed to find a judge or lawyer in this damn plate? It's been ages since they all left. My apologies, but we're simply following procedure. If that's all, then I'd like to assist the next customer. There's a long line behind you. Then, withdraw the money from this passbook. This passbook? Yes, this jogs my memory. You've already applied several times before. But can you prove that you claim... I mean, but can you prove that you came by this source of income legally? He sent me this passbook along with a letter. But by the time I arrived in Davistown, he'd already passed away. All his neighbors can attest to that. Do you really expect that to hold up, legally speaking? Just give me my stuff. I'm leaving. All your belongings are right here. Remember to take them with you, ma'am. Also, may I offer you a, li a little reminder? What is it? Based on the photos you provided, we can only guarantee one thing. The flooding to your restaurant has significantly reduced its value, meaning it is no longer enough to offset your existing debts. If you don't want to enter the compulsory liquidation process, I recommend you consider the following. I've heard enough. Just keep your trap shut, bastard. No! Not the... Not the diner, the cafe that I want to stay at. Helena? Looks like she didn't notice us. Why are there so many people here today? What's the bank up to? This is the collection notice I received earlier this morning. It says that I'm insolvent and will be declared bankrupt soon, but I've been making my payments. Ma'am, we've been extending your loan term so far, but we're no longer able to grant you leniency. The good news is that after liquidating your existing assets, your remaining balance will be only 2,000 gold certificates. 2,000 gold certificates? I don't even have that many gold certificates. I already used them on EXP for Jessica. Which I'm sure you have no trouble procuring. Unless they mean gold certificates as in the ones that we need like 300 of to buy someone, then oh no, 2,000 of those? No, 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 no. Please, can you extend it just another two months? No, one month is enough. Unfortunately, no. We can't push it back even a single day. If you're unable to make your payment, we'll have no choice but to begin the compulsory process. All your property will be con will be confiscated, and you'll have to leave Davis Town within the time allotted. We'll continue to pay off your debt of roughly 10,000 certs. Of course, failure to do so will result in criminal liability. But I can't afford that. Whether it's two or 10,000, please, I beg you, just one more month's grace. If you truly have no other options, then please take a look at this. The Pioneer Plan. If you apply now, you'll be able to enjoy a certain amount of loan forgiveness. But I'm already so old. Even if I went to the frontier, what could I possibly do? Are you in any position to worry about that? Will you continue to carry on your debt at risk of criminal liability and lose the roof over your head? Or would you rather shed some of your debt and start a new life on the frontier? Do you really need to hear my opinion? I'll sign it. Excellent. Please head to your right. My colleague there will help you get signed up. Next customer! What... what the hell is this? 
if you two are here to discuss business, please get in line. Oh, if it isn't Miss Liskar and Miss Franca. How are you doing? Have you finished looking over the list? You got some explaining to do. Why are you forcing people out into the barrens? By signing the agreement, they can shed a lot of their existing debt and start over without the weight on their backs. Isn't the best isn't that the best possible outcome? And what about the list? How are any of these people supposed to be bandits? They're just a bunch of destitute old folks who don't want to be, to be run out of their homes. Once they go bankrupt, their houses no longer belong to them, but rather to us, the creditors. What else would you call it when someone takes advantage of the lack of police to squat on someone else's property? Is it not a crime? So your so-called law and order is just driving, driving out poor people who can't pay up? There's nothing so-called about it that is law and order, Miss Franca. Boo! Back to my favorite place in town. Insurance fraud? They're declaring you bankrupt? That's why I didn't want to talk about it. I feel like I'm gonna pop a blood vessel. If the bank is purposely depreciating the value of the, of the diner, how much are they slashing it by? I've been going back and forth with them for a while now, but it seems like they're settling at 50,000 certs. 50,000? And is it gold certificates? If it's only 50,000, I can lend you the rest. Just like you secretly lent money to Leon. Sylvia told you? It's been eating up at her inside, so she told me this morning. Don't worry though, I can keep a secret. If you want to lend me the money, of course I'd accept it. But who knows how long it'll be it'll take to pay it back, if ever. I don't mind. Even if you never pay it back. No, stop it. Don't say things like that. I'll definitely find a way to return the favor someday. By working at Rose Island. Here. When the bank comes to collect, give them this check. Sorry. <sighs> and why are you apologizing? It ain't like you're the one borrowing money. By the way, one other thing. Leon was too embarrassed to tell you himself, but he wanted me to pass this on. He found out about the money? You silly girl. I told you your secret's safe with me. Why would I tell him? He just wants to treat you to a meal. Seems like bandits ain't the only thing Woodrow's been tracking. He's got a good catch of foul beasts. Miles and Benny will be there too. Oh, okay then. You don't sound too happy about it. And that's because, actually, I saw a lot of people outside the bank on my way here. They were signing agreements to head out to the frontier. I asked around, and it seems like it's a way of shedding some of their debt. But why do they have to abandon everything and risk their lives to start over in a place with nothing, just for a little bit of debt relief? Can they even survive the ordeal? This event is just oof. Huge, huge oof. And last but not least, the main course. Garlic-crusted falbies with roast potatoes. I want that. I want garlic-crusted falbies with roast potatoes. That sounds amazing. Well, that smells amazing. Same brain. I'll have this piece. Put it down, Woody. That's for Jessica. You heard her. She's a star of tonight's feast. It's no big deal. I just saw that what was going on in Davistown and felt that I couldn't sit back and watch. As for the food, I'm fine with whatever, really. I even had some biscuits earlier, so I'm not that hungry. See, she's fine with it. No means no, Benny. I no means no, Benny. This one's for you. Oh, wow. Th thank you very much. What's so funny? N nothing. It just occurred to me how different you seem compared to when we first met. Yeah, he's been like that for ages. When he first showed into town, he immediately pissed off pretty much everyone in the mines. We all thought that this grumpy, sharp-tongued asshole was here to cause trouble. And what happened after that? Then he met Helena. He really should be thanking her if it weren't for her warmth and willingness to put up, to put in a, full, a few good words for him with those unlikable fellas. 
but chat a bit today, and you'll find some ki- and you'll find some common ground tomorrow. In the end, she discovered this his more charming side, and showed it off to the others. There was even a song going around at the time, probably written by one of her admirers. Still, you remember how it goes, Miles? Oh, so they, so they are all old time friends, and I'm guessing they really are around the same age. Dang, Helena, you aged like fine wine. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Right, there was that song. I think it's coming back to me. Give us the intro and let's sing it together. Who gave you Drake's permission to sing in my restaurant? I want to hear the song. Oh, there. I wandered here alone, not a penny to my name. My hometown is far behind me, miles and miles away. The barren stretch before me as I, as far as I can see. And who's waiting at the end, who indeed but she? She spread her arms, spread her heart, show me that pretty face. And from the moment on, I found my dreams in her embrace. Is this song about Helena? Who else? If you ask me, the heard mentions might not be a specific person, but rather a broader idea. What sort of idea? Maybe that she is a home filled with everyone's dreams. Davis Town itself. Hey, that makes sense. Think about it. The second verse talks about her body, right? That's the energy tower. Her hair is the white smoke coming from it, and her burning heart must be the plant's furnace. And in the section that you fellas just sang, with her arms in her embrace, ain't that just like those two long railroad tracks embracing everyone here? So many pioneers carved out this place, this piece of land, bit by bit, with their tools in their hands. It become the place they started their families and businesses in. And after that, even more youngsters arrived with their dreams and aspirations, following the footsteps of the previous generation and pitching in their youth and passion. She and only she is worthy of everyone's admiration. I knew it! I knew it! It all makes sense now! Anyhow, no one helps anybody pining all their hopes and dreams on my body. You sure about that, ma'am? <laughs> The engineer had nothing more to say. His eyelids droop and his head tilts back slightly. The restaurant owner's words whisking him back to the past. He remembers that soot-stained faces of his co-workers. When they went home after a long shift, he remembers how his neighbors would greet him in the morning when he left for work. He remembers a cool and refreshing beer from escaping... Escaping... I mean, beer foam escaping from the rim of his glass, and the warmth on his cheeks from the children's kisses. His thoughts are wild and turbulent, but they fill his heart with warmth and comfort. Just like the song he is humming right now, completely tuneless, yet moving nev nevertheless. At who's waiting at the end, who indeed but she? She spread her arms, spread her heart, and showed me that pretty face. And from that moment on, I found my dreams in her embrace. The others in the room stop what they're doing and make no other sounds. Only the engineer's voice is allowed to fill the entire restaurant. After a while, the boiler worker's coarse voice joins the song and the restaurant owner begins to hum along softly. Even Woodrow, whose attention had been seized by the food on his plate, cannot help but tap his fingertips against his knee to the beat. Only Jessica feels gripped by an inexplicable unease, as if there is dark, a dark shadow in her heart that will not go away. So bittersweet. <laughs> Though, I can't believe for like many years they thought that the song was about... <laughs> was about her. But she... Okay, I have to stare for a bit to see how that went. Okay, I got this. It would be funny if the song actually was about Helena in the end. I would love that. And already a little bit more, and then I can start bringing out more peoples. I could put her here actually. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Oh no, I need a healer soon. Oh, my bad. 
Yes, indeed. Oh, Healer good. No cool. Heal me, please. Oh, that was super effective. I like that a lot. I shall put her here. Yeah, this is good. Good setup. Um, but I should have put thorns closer. And I'm just gonna use that skill already, so then that way... Tifon can be prepared for next time. And might as well just bully the guys at the top for now. As one do. Actually, I can put him here. Wait, no, 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 it's out of range from the heels. I can put him right here. You know, why not? No regret. Okay, I can use a skill. Run, my dudes, run. Thank you, Susie. Oh, you're so good. Okay, very, very nice. Yay. Back to my favorite place here. She spread her arms, spread her heart. Show me that pretty face. And from that moment on, I found my dreams in her embrace. I still remember when you fellas got together to sing that back in the day. Your voices lit up the entire room. Felt like your singing cleared up the winter fog that year. Always the same song as just now, ma'am? <laughs> Hardly. They knew all sorts of songs. The miners came from all over, bringing so many songs in so many languages. Um, does Woodrow also know how to sing? He ain't much of a talker. Whenever we get together, we all get together. He just stuffs his face. Like now. He <laughs> sounds like what I would be doing. It's like, oh yes, we're gonna be hanging out, but what I'm mainly gonna do is just eat. <clears throat> Helena, when are you gonna crack open that bottle of champagne I brought back? Shoot, I really am getting old, huh? I nearly forgot. Um, about Miles, he... Don't worry about him. Said he wanted to take a stroll, so he did. Just pop the cork and pour him a glass. We can toast when he comes back. Alright, without further ado... The cork shoots out with, with a pop. Golden wine and silver foam splashing out at the same time. The sweet aroma spreads across the room. And wondrous befuddlement sparkles in the eyes of everyone at the table. Here, Jessica. You're the star tonight, so the first class is for you. Thank you. Next up is you, Woody. Thanks for helping her talk some sense in that stubborn old burden beast. Don't mention it. This one's for Miles. This one's for me. And the last and definitely least is you, Leon. <laughs> for killing us with worry all this time. Okay, I deserve that. To be perfectly honest, I actually... If you got something to say, better wait for Miles. You ain't gonna leave him out like that, are you? Aw, oh, yeah. Makes sense. The table that had been lively all evening falls quiet, and the spilled champagne seeps silently into the dark, unseen places. Past bowls and plates. Excuse me. What is it, Benny? Past cups and saucers. Actually, there's something I want to announce to everyone. Was wondering why you were so quiet today, but I guess you had something brewing. Wing to snatch a spotlight from your dad at his dinner table. I mean, at the dinner table. Benny, why don't you wait for Miles too? Past empty wine bottles. No, I think now's the best time. I... Until it flows over the table's edge and seeps into the floor. Snap. I'm leaving. Huh. Cause he finally got sick of us nosy old farts. Noisy old farts. Can't you wait for Miles to get back so we can share one last drink before we say goodbye? No, I meant I'm leaving Davistown. Look at this kid, getting drunk without touching a drop of champagne. No, I'm perfectly sober. It's something I've been meaning to get off my chest, but I never got this chance, so I'm saying it now. Where you going, Benny? What's wrong? Why does everyone look like it just started raining? Miles, I... 
Benny just said that he wants to leave Davis Town. But what How long have you been thinking about this boy? About a year or so. Last month, Miss Selena from next door came over and said that her daughter in Ironforge City managed to find a caravan willing to come through here. She, she said that she was planning to go with it to follow her daughter. She asked if I wanted to come. She thought it'd be a waste of my talents to stay. No matter how much I learned here, I wouldn't have a place to use any of it. She told me she didn't want me to become the next Sylvia. Oof, poor Sylvia. <laughs> wow, Sylvia being talked about like that too. What about your living expenses? Tuition? Where are you going to live? Don't worry, there are plenty of boarding schools in Ironforge City willing to provide scholarships so I can study there. Benny, why wait so long to discuss this with us? It's a big decision. You know better than that. I'm sorry, Miles. He ain't asking for your for input. Just letting us know the decision he's made. Have you thought this through? Weigh the pros and cons? Who knows? This place might perk up once it gets moving again. You can always decide then. I don't want to wait that long. The only reason you're all willing to stay put and, and pray things will get better is because you remember the good old days. But I don't. This place has been a dump for as long as I can remember. My adopted father worked so hard for this place, throwing away everything else without hesitation. My brother took this place, his place, as a pillar of the family and wanted to join a mercenary group when he came of age to earn money to send back home. But a few years later, the, those people sent his belongings back with no explanation in the attached letter except for a few lines saying that they're sorry. There should have been another path for him back then, just like there should be one for me now. Am I wrong? Nah, Benny, you're realistic. I support this. So when are you leaving? Tomorrow. Oh, that is so soon, Benny. Benny, Benny, Benny. I know I shouldn't have waited this long to tell you, but if I don't say it now, I'll never get the chance. For real, for real. Good luck out there, Benny. The boy glances across the table at his father, mustering the courage to look him in the eyes. He desperately hopes to see anger and resentment. That will make him feel a little less guilty, a little less conflicted. But his father simply hangs his head and remains silent, completely at a loss for words. Leon. It's fine. It'll be alright. It's not a bad idea. You should leave. You deserve it. Helena gives Leon a few pats on the shoulder, but he simply continues to mechanically repeat a few words of approval, prompting her to shake him a bit harder. It's fine, Helena. I I'll be alright. This is how it should be. Then I wish you a safe journey. Take care of yourself, kid. Honestly, that's kind of goals. Being able to... Like, set off for, like, a really awesome school. It's like, there's even scholarships. And boarding. Like, heck yeah, that sounds... That sounds kind of fun. Why is it so damn cold here? I picked up some wood so we can... That we can burn. Feel any better yet? Judging from how you curled up into a ball, I'm guessing you've never been through anything like this. Huh. How could your folks think that you'd make it as a mercenary? Huh? You decided it on yourself? But why? Did you get in a fight with your family? Oh. There are people you want to protect and problems you want to solve, huh? Man, sounds pretty ambitious if you ask me. I'm a bit jealous to be honest. Most people you see out here in these ruins, on the battlefield, were pushed here by circumstance, myself included. Driven by poverty, by injustice, by darkness and violence, we often pick up our weapons and rashly open fire without worrying about what we're aiming at. Right up until we finally step on, in a puddle of, of mud and look down at our footprints, only to realize what we just stepped in was a river of blood. When that happens, I'm sure there's some noble ideal that I can keep you from collapsing in defeat. Too bad I never found out what it was. I was only in it for the money. My family owes a lot of money. And my little brother, well, he's damn smart. If he'd been born rich, he'd be at the top of his class. But if he stays back home... The only future he's got is as a debt collector.
I... I don't think that counts as being in it only for the money. You're doing it for your family. That's noble too. Oh, okay. So Jessica... She was co-workers with the bro. Eh, who can say? But for now at least... We're doing it just to survive. The attack's about to begin. Stop drinking already, Leon. Can I sleep at the diner tonight? If you want. Poor fella. Just look at him. Ah. <sighs> it's just like seven years ago. What, you guys gonna talk about Carl now? Don't mind me. No need to tiptoe tip around it. This is already the second time. The, the second time. Twice now. So so why are you avoiding me? You think you think I can't handle it? Leon's gonna be lonely, but at least he's got his friends. Thank you for bringing me here, Jessica. You can head back now. I still don't feel very good about this. I don't think your boss would be happy about how you're always fretting over us. I just can't bear to stand on the sidelines when there's something I can do. Still, you helped Dad keep the house, so thanks again. But the reason he finally sold his shares was because of you. I know. He had to give up what he was most precious to him just to keep a roof over my head. But with me gone, he'll finally be free of what, free to do what he really wants. In that sense, the house was never the obstacle. It was me and my brother. Do you remember my brother? Are you talking about Carl? I heard you and Helena mention him before. Yeah. We know him as Carl. But over at Blacksteel, he went by a code name. Black Plate. Black Plate? It's water under the bridge, Leon. Why dredge it up now? No point trying to stop him, Miles. Just let him talk. He never brought it up, so we didn't see nothing. But now that he wants to look back, it's a job to let him. I suppose. I didn't ask for these thoughts, but in the dead of night, do I really have any control over what pops into my head? The more I dwelled on it, the more painful it was, the more painful it was, the less it made sense. But Benny figured it that all out a long time ago. He was right. Every step Carl took was never really his own choice because I was too stubborn, too arrogant, and I ended up running everything dry. Our money, our lives, and our choices. When I was little, there was a miner who'd always complain about how nothing was easy anymore when you're middle-aged. You run out of energy and can only focus on a few things at a time. So you gotta be smart. You gotta keep your eyes on what really matters. Stop being greedy. But when it was my turn to grow old, I just refused to accept it. I grabbed the wrong end of the rope and held from on for my dear life. Told myself I was a brave warrior, fighting the good fight against fate itself. And what do I have to show for it? Fought my way to the mountain of death. Fought for a Davis town on its last legs. Fought for my eldest to die on the battlefield. My second saw right through me. So why wouldn't he run the hell away? Leon, we all know how much the mine means to you. Then tell me, how much? Because I haven't a damn clue about at this point. All I know is that I should have held on to those little hands back then. The hands of my children. I was a damn fool. Uh, how could I not see the writing on the walls when I heard that complaint? I should have etched those words into my mind. I'm glad his friends are there for him. My dad might be an old fool with the memory of a of a sieve, but I'm not. I recognize you in the moment I saw you. The emblem on your uniform and your gear, it's the exact same one I saw on the bag with Carl's personal effects. He... he was your brother. I never realized. Did he never tell you about his real name? Or did you simply forget all about him? I remember him. I didn't work with him for very long, but how could I forget? You actually were with Carl? In Chernobog, we were left together to scout out, the st scout out the strength of the enemies hidden in the ruins. I was there when he was injured. I I was so flustered at the time, my mind went completely blank. I... I... You were there when he died. Y yes, I was. 
But you still didn't know his real name. Actually... Actually, the time I spent with him was very short. Actually, I was so scared back then that I barely remember a thing. Actually, mercenaries always keep a few secrets close to their hearts that they don't readily, readily disclose to others. Actually, there's no actually at all. Jessica knows this very well. I'm sorry. It's alright. That wasn't the point I was trying to make. What I wanted to know is, have you ever seen a silver ring in inlaid with diamonds? It belonged to his biological mother, and he always carried it with them, but it wasn't in the bag sent back by your company. If you watched him die, then surely you know what happened to it. Were you the one who took it? If so, give me back my brother's things. No, I, I have no idea. I've never seen him with a ring like that. M maybe I got lost. How could, how could Carl possibly lose that ring? Oof, if someone took it. Or maybe he sold it off. He could have sold it off to give money back to, you know, Leon and Benny because he's a good brubber. Finally done with the last one. Let's take a look. Oh ho, number 120. With just a few strokes of the pen, 120 people have been sent to the frontier. Well, you better keep that pen moving or you'll be next. Sylvia, mind getting the lights? I'm going to go lie down for a sec. Okay, time to check the lights. 120 people. Sylvia's stress and anxiety makes her habitually reach up to fumble around her collar. As soon as she feels the familiar ring resting atop her chest, she hastily gives it a squeeze. Oh, oh, a ring, eh? Oh no, were Carl and Sylvia a thing? The ring's unyielding texture digs into her palm, yet gradually calms her down as well. Just like that embrace seven years ago, it was so tight she couldn't breathe, yet it eventually placated her surging tears. Carl, what should I do? What else is there for me to do? Aw, they were a thing! Since you don't know where it is, head back, Jessica. Thanks for sending me off. Honestly, I'm grateful that you convinced Dad to choose the house. Now, even if I decide to leave, he won't be left with nothing. At the end of the day, those shares did nothing but make him feel a bit better. Not a damn thing. If... if he ultimately wasn't able to keep the house, will, will you still have chosen to leave? I don't know. I don't want to be an obstinate fool, but I don't want to be an ingrate either. All right, this is goodbye for real, Jessica. Good luck out there, Benny. Benny boy. Why are you still following me? What do you hope to accomplish? What can you even do at this point? I, I'm not sure myself. All I know is, I don't think you should leave like this. Please go back already, I'm begging you. You're holding a golden nail in your hand. It's an extreme it's extremely valuable, but please don't use it to repair paper shoes. My paper houses. In the end, no matter how hard you work at it, all you'll be left with are a few extra holes. Paper that thin wall Paper that thin will crumble under its weight anyway. Go back to where you belong. The house swathed in silver and gold. Find a place where you can drive that nail in. That's where it truly belongs. So please, just stop following me, alright? Now, goodbye for real, Benny, my boy. Has Benny come back yet? Yes, Woodrow. I saw him alone. I saw him home. Then why did you hit him back too? I won't be able to fall asleep even if I do. I wanted a little bit of time to myself. What the hell did that brat say to you? Just something very reasonable. It reminded me of... Oh? It reminded me of a few things. A few things that I should have already known. Ever since I was little, helping out others was like grabbing a, a little yellow toy, Ball Beast, in a crystal clear bathtub. 
all I had to do was extend my hand, and I'd be able to prevent the tub from spilling over. But that's because the faucet built with the wealth and authority bestowed to me only dispensed the warmest, clearest water. That's why everything around me always looks so pristine. But as soon as I stepped out of that bathtub from my family circle, I came face to face with reality. Reality is a, a, murky, a murky quagmire. When you reach in, you have no idea what you'll pull out or what you'll touch. There's no reason for you to agonize over this. To be blunt, nothing you did meant a damn thing to Benny's final decision. I watched that kid grow up. He's been full of good ideas since he was little. Great ideas. He... He really takes after someone I once knew. When he sorts things out in his head and makes up his mind, he'll set off in a straight line and never look back. He'll clear a path forward, but no way back. Sounds like an extremely determined person. Almost irrationally so. Hardly. He was the most rational person I knew. I know. The source of all our problems, as well as the solutions, can only be found the road ahead of us. I am a bit jealous of people like that. Being that perceptive at a young age must save you a lot of unnecessary detours. Don't ever envy people like for that, Jessica. Why do you say that? Because they'll end up bald. Not a single strand of hair. <laughs> bald Benny. Bald Benny, my boy. Thanks for the reassurance. What a way to end that off. What real funny. Sudden impact. Go on. Make your day even more exciting. I want an extra exciting day. Two weeks later. Hey, teacher's pet. We've been waiting here for nearly a whole day already. You saw the news that the messenger brought us from HQ, didn't you? They said that the ETA is tomorrow afternoon. He also said that we need to spend the night before preparing everything needed for the connection. The Davistown connectors were working fine to start with. Lara got it all up and running in half a day. And now we're just standing around with our thumbs up our butts. If you're cold, you're free to use a tent we set up. Or warm yourself by the fire. What if I'm not cold? What if I'm afraid? Of what? I don't know. I just really can't tell how this whole thing will go down. Liskarn brings her communicator to her ear. It's not receiving any signal. This proved that Fort Baron, known to Black Steel's operations, I mean operators, as the landship, has yet to enter a transmission range. Not going to warm yourself up, up a bit longer, Jessica? I'll pass. It's almost dark. It'll feel cold regardless. You shouldn't worry too much. I mean, yeah. I'm real mad about the bang too, but the landship is almost here. The boss isn't about to let those banker bastards make a fool of us. Boss? Which boss? Mr. Cliff, of course. Who else? He... It's hard to say. I mean, in the end, he's a businessman. Ooh, hello, hello. Jessica finally looks in the direction of the platform. Instinctively, she reaches into her pouch and rubs the bullet inside. Hmm? Look over there. Is that a fire? Where? Running the plate so close to the mining district. Maybe they started a fire by accident while heating themselves up. Uh-oh, that's not good. Hold on. No, there's not just one. What? Well, what is this? Uh-oh. Jessica? Team Blacksteel. Ship estimated to arrive in... Acknowledged. Jessica, let everybody know. Captain, there are multiple distinct fires on the plate. I don't know what's going on, but I have to go check. Why now? Why now of all times? But we've already got the signal from the landship. Fort Baron shouldn't be far. Jessica, Jessica! Where are you going? Captain, what should we do? Let her go. We'll continue the connection mission. Run, Jessica, run! What's with all the ruckus at this hour? Where's the noise coming from? 
Someone's pounding on the plant. Woodrow grabs his firearm from his from under his pillow and listens closely to the commotion downstairs. Oh, Benny left at the right time then, if all this craziness is gonna happen. Hurry up and get down here, Woody. Someone broke in. Uh-oh. Blech. Feels awful. If I'd known, I wouldn't have drank so much. I'm so tired. Maybe I'll just lie down here. That way, I'll freeze to death on the street by tomorrow for sure. Huh. <sighs> What's the noise? What's going on? What the hell is this? R run, these people just barged in and, and started smashing and looting. Who are they? Huh, so it's you, Gramps. You're the one from the snowfield. I'm a pretty lucky guy, Gramps. Shh, don't make a fuss. You attract others. You were real lucky too, getting away from me. But I wonder how long that luck will last. Run, you can't take him on! Ah, it's these punks. So you're here too, old timer. Good. Seizes the trouble of looking for you. What's going on, Helena? I figured you'd have knocked them all out by the time I got downstairs. They've gotten a lot more reckless. They've really gone nuts. Hey now, no whispering. If you've got nothing nice to say, you can share it with the class. You ignorant brat. Those bullets must be real pricey, yeah? So expensive. You don't even have all six rounds loaded. What are you getting at? Makes sense. There ain't a whole lot of materials you can use in this, on this plate. I mean, if it weren't for that, how come you've been packing that piece every day for the last... for all these years? And I ain't ever heard of you. I mean, ain't never heard about nobody getting shot. My friends, these two bastards are all well past their expiration date. Put them out of their misery, then help yourselves to whatever you find. What do you mean they're past their prime, or past their expiration date? I mean, look at her! She's gorgeous! And him, he looks cool! Darn loot goblins. What? What are you people doing? Out of the way, booze hound. Who, who gave you the right to make trouble here? Ugh. Here, let me treat you to another bottle. Now get some sleep. Oh. Heh, <laughs> nice one. Died as he lived with a drink in the face, in his face. Humph. That's about everything there is to grab. Into the next shop. Leon's having the worst day. First, he had to sell off the stuff that he loves. Then his his son says he's gonna go away. And now he got hit on the head with a bottle. Are you okay, Leon? Let me help you up. Huh. <sighs> Those breaths can be so cruel. Your face is all bloody. I'm glad he has a helmet on. I'm okay. Just a little dizzy. Look at how they smashed the place up. I, it wasn't just the display windows. Forget the windows. They cleaned out the whole store. What the hell is going on tonight? We're short on time here, Gramps. Quit with the hide and seek. You're here, aren't you? What a pain. This place is so cluttered. No room to move at all. Get out of here already, you old bastard. Hmm. Heh. <laughs> Surprised you could dodge that with your leg. Guess I didn't give you enough credit. Let's see how long your luck's gonna hold out. Come on, Jessica, get there, please. Garg. Heh, <laughs> got you. Honestly, you're so lucky to die in this stinking place. Suits you just perfectly. Huh. <laughs> just a little more. Hang in there, old bones. It'll work. It'll definitely work. Now I can finally say goodbye to you, old fart. Not so fast. It's over for you, punks. What's this? Steam? It burns! You're right, though. The singing place is my home, so of course it's great. It's a great fit for me. You. No one makes trouble in my house. 
Mm. You asked for this. You're right. It's not fully loaded. And it took quite a bit of trouble to get these... To fire in my gun. Which is why. I ain't wasting any on you. It's not worth it. The old man holsters his gun and removes his couplings. He then rolls back his sleeves to reveal his arms. Oh! Punch him! Really, Woody? At your age? No, 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 no. Let him cook. When's the last time you saw me use my whip? When you sold those... Those stock beasts, the caravan for supplies, outside the plate. So three or four years ago? Right, only three or four years ago. I'll take care of their leaders. Can you take care of the rest? Sure thing. Leave it to me. Make it quick. There's still no, there's still time before dawn. Maybe we can catch some some beauty sleep. Too bad there ain't any trees around to hang you from. I could try from the roof though. What's wrong? You got us surrounded, but none of you have the balls to lead the charge. Don't get cocky, old bastard. The show's just getting started. What's the word in the street? What's going on tonight? These are all the bandages I have left. It's not enough to wrap around your head, but press against, press them against the wound. It helps start the, stop the blood. I'm fine. Just tell me what you know. At first, I heard some things about the, from the east side of the plate. You know, where all the thugs gather. They say lots of folks in town think that since we ain't ever get, we ain't ever gonna pay back the banks back. They might as well, might as well what? Might as well rob everyone, then flee to the frontier for a fresh start. You saw it. It's like they all went crazy. They're beating people up, smashing up stores, stealing everything. Wait, Leon, look. That's the direction of your home. Damn it! Yeah, Leon's having the worst day. Manager, I... I heard the situation outside is pretty bad. Calm down, Sylvia. We're all safe here inside the bank. They're a despicable bunch beyond redemption, but before they before I mean but before us and only us, they're perfect gentlemen. If you're afraid, get some sleep. By the time you wake up, you'll never see them again. What do you mean? Has no one told you? Our business partners will be here soon. Before you know it, those men will be useless to us. Which is why when they suggested they'd leave town with some souvenirs, we had no reason to go along with that. I mean, no reason to not go along with that. All we have to do is wait patiently. Like we've done so many times, the whole tight, and everything will be as it should be. Manager, I just got a transmission from Black Steel. Their line ship is arriving sooner than expected. Tsk, not only are they... Are they here, they're here... They're here sooner than we thought. But it's all the same to us. Looks like you didn't learn your lesson. Shit, every damn time it's either a lesson or a warning. You're ever gonna fight for real. My hand! If you're that eager to eat a bullet, I could oblige. Left foot or right hand? I mean, left foot or left hand, pick one. You have no idea. You can chase us up today, but there's more where we came from. Not one of you's ever gonna get away. I'd worry about myself first, if I were you. What's that noise? Uh-oh. Fire, help! Ma'am, is Leon still, si still inside? I, I don't know. When I came out the house, the house was already on, on fire. Please make way, ma'am. What are you doing, girl? You can't go inside. The fire's too strong. You won't make it back out. Ma'am, please go and find more people to help. Fight the fire. I'll go inside and look for Leon. Who is he to anyway? Why put your life on the line to save him? An acquaintance. Now please let me go. That's it. Not even a friend. Don't do this. Uh Jessica, why are you here? What, what are you doing? Leon? So you weren't inside. I saw it, Jessica. I, I saw it. Leon. She said that she was... She was gonna run to the fire looking for you. I- I thought you- Don't cry, my girl. I'm doing just fine. But- but your house- It doesn't matter. It's okay. I can sleep over at Helena's. 
Good thing no one else lives here. I had nothing but empty walls to look at anyway. It was suffocating. It's not so bad it got burned down. Now there's nothing to dwell on anymore. <gasps> if, I wonder if Benny will hear about this. It's like... I wonder how Dad's doing. Let me send a letter to Helena to get the, to the tea on Dad. What? The house burned down? He's been... He's been sleeping inside the diner? What happened? What's that noise? What do I do? What do I do? What do you do? I told you it's burned down. Let it stay that way. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? No, what do you... What do you mean? What do I do? What's wrong? Jessica, you okay? Oh, hello, ma'am. I love the jacket. Tila, I see you're going in and out of Mr. Cliff's office. Did Liskarm Squad screw this up? No, there's an emergency there's an emergency situation on the plate. But they've always completed their mission. The landship will connect to Davis Town very soon. Got it. All those doctors will know better than to hang around once we're there. So, I mean, all those debtors will know better than to hang around once we're there. So, watch what you say. Sorry, my bad. But what else did the boss say about it? Don't tell me I had a change of heart just because people are making trouble. Everyone is to proceed according to plan. All right. At last, looks like we're almost there. First, there was a strange gust causing everyone's hair to flutter. Next, there was the rumble they felt beneath their feet. Finally, there was a loud boom in the sky, hundreds of yards away. Oh? Breaking through the dense fog of the winter night, Fort Baron has finally arrived after its week, its two-week journey. Everyone is gathered on the streets or standing by the windows, watching it intently. Whether they welcome it or reject it, it arrives. Whether this has been a nightmare or a pleasant dream, they are all jolted awake. Intimidating. Woodrow weighs the gun in his hand. He's not very pleased about... pleased at getting... at being interrupted. He looks away from the vessel in the distance to find that the man on the ground has scurried away, leaving only a long bloody trail. Heh, <laughs> should've shot his foot when I had the chance. God damn it. <laughs> That's all Woodrow has to say about that. Like, man, I lost my chance. All wheels. And now the last one for the day, CV5, since I did one, yeah, one, two, three, four. Four is good. Because after is there's six, seven, eight. Or actually, is there another thing afterwards too? Wait, 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 wait. Wait, brain needs to work. So, one, two, I'm gonna skip the tutorial. Three, and then four, five, six, seven. And then eight, nine. Oh, wait. Yeah. So, then after it's five, six, I mean, six, seven, eight, after story, and then Jessica's thingy, right? Or maybe I'll do one more after this. We'll see. I wonder how much dinner's gonna be left for me. I really want that enchilada. The chicken enchilada, black beans, and rice. Yummy, 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 yummy. Actually, how long is Jessica's record? Cuz... That's also gonna be part of the thingy. Actually, I don't have to worry too much. And now I stare. Two people died in, during the unrest. Four are seriously wounded. Dozens more have lighter injuries. Thirteen shops and homes were looted, and small fires broke out in parts of the main street. Fortunately, our squads managed to quickly bring the situation under control. Currently, we have mercenary teams stationed in the plates 
most important facilities and main roads to maintain public security and order. Should I stop my report? Let's pause here for now. Then if you excuse me, I'll come back... I'll come back in once you're done with your call. No need. You can listen in. Apologies for calling this late, Mr. Cliff. We've got the reserve funds in storage, and I'd like to thank everyone for escorting them all this way. No need to thank us for fulfilling our contract, also. I'd rather discuss what comes next, the towing in person. When will you be free? Tomorrow at noon? Sure, I'll have my secretary arrange it. I'd also like to ask another question if you don't mind. Go ahead. I'm wondering, how do you plan to handle the, the townsfolk who participated in last night's unrest? We've detained the ones we caught on the land ship for the time being, and we're currently tracking down the rest. Tsk. Those thugs are already giving us a headache. They're in dire straits financially, and now they turn to robbing others. You sound pretty familiar with them. Yes, they're all old acquaintances on the bank's debt list. Mind if we take a look at that? Of course not. You're going to take a look into it. I mean, if you're going to look into the matter, you should start with these people. You this buggy. How dare you try to bite my leg. I'm too delicious for my own good. Thanks for bringing him over last night, Jessica. Is Leon alright? Benny's gone. And then his house... The only thing he had left burned down in a fire. He... He didn't say anything, fell asleep as soon as I treated his wounds. He's lucky he spends his nights getting wasted on the streets instead of sleeping in bed. That's enough out of you, Woody. Fine, I'll go check on him. Jessica, weren't you outside welcoming the landship yesterday? Why'd you come back all of a sudden? Actually, Woodrow, I was looking for you, but I saw smoke coming from Leon's house, so I went there first. For me? What for? Ever since I got here, I've been worrying nonstop about this, the landship's arrival. But that's your company. Ain't it a good thing? Now you've got an entire fortress of your buddies to come to take over any problems y'all have... y'all have been facing. But that doesn't mean Black Steel being here will be good for the people of the plate. Nomadic platforms are expensive to build and an extremely scarce resource. So the government won't discard just discard them. They'll probably refurbish the plate, upgrading it, and integrating it to a larger settlement. Still not seeing the downside. But they don't want the residents to stay, so they're doing everything they can to make them leave on their own. That's where the bank's here. They recovered a lot of the fallen platform's assets through loan contracts and risky ventures. And they've sent a lot of people out on the frontier too. Methods like these are perfectly legal. There's nothing for us to object to. Are the people really going to take it though? Maybe they don't have a choice. You've been here a lot longer than I have, so I'm not. So I'm sure you know better than I do. Heh. <laughs> we still have a few tough nuts to crack. Which is why they've engaged a mercenary group like Black Steel. And what about after your undoubtedly thorough of investigation? Do you plan to keep the detainees at Fort Baron? I may as well ask you... I mean, I may as well ask how you've dealt with them in the past. We used to ship guys like them off to the frontier when we still had, a, when we still had police. Then we'll do the same. Thank you for doing all this for us. It's no big deal. Looking forward to our meeting tomorrow. Hold on, can I make a small request? Could we have additional security deployed at the bank? No problem. I'll have my subordinates make any further arrangements. Great. See you tomorrow, then. What do you think, Tila? That we're getting our hands dirty again. What else can they do? They're all respectable people who can't sully their reputations. So it's up to us mercs to be the bad guys. So how should we handle that last request from the bank? Did they suffer any damage last night? Just some obscene graffiti scrawled all over, all over the, be the building. Whatever. Emotional damage counts as damage too. Just dispatch some people familiar with the situation. The important thing for now is to figure out 
how to clear all these irrelevance off the board before the plates starts moving. I know how we're gonna do that. We're gonna give them... We're gonna offer them some jobs, like at Rhodes Island. Hello, Helena. Welcome to Rhodes Island. Woodrow, you can come too. Miles and Leon also. So, your landship ain't here just to tow the plate away, is it? Helping the bank evict debtors and recover non-performing assets are both on the to-do list. As for the methods, I don't think they'll leave any room for concessions. And what do you want me to do about it? Before I came here, someone asked me to bring a bullet to you. A bullet? Who? My boss, Clip Cliff. And who's that? When I was looking for you that day, there was an open drawer with a photo inside. Cliff is the, is the man who had his arm around your shoulder. So he changed his name, huh? And now he's your boss. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to look. But if you have a history with each other, then maybe you could have a word with him? I don't know. Is there... If there's anyone he listened to, it's you, right? And I, I really don't have any other ideas. Jessica, I appreciate you helping out Leon, Helena. And who knows how else? I mean, and who knows who else? But I just can't wrap my head around why you're being so stubborn about this. You're a merc. You've got no duty to us. You don't have to stick your nose into every little thing you see. Back in Victoria, I sat back and just let things happen, and it ended horribly. It was all my fault. Thanks for bringing me the bullet. I've been looking for it for a long, long time now. You should get back to your friends first. Some things, all I can do is give it my best shot. But... Woody. The bed's empty, Woody. Did Leon go out? I ran into him this morning. He's off looking for Miles. Then why don't you... Then why didn't you tell me earlier? Let's just say, I forgot. Sure you forgot. Come again. My apologies, sir, but this place has been sealed off and no one's allowed in or out. What do you mean no one's in allowed in or out? I spent half my life here. Let me through. I'm sorry, sir. Hey, wait. What are you doing to me? This. Please forgive me, sir, but this is my job. Get your ass back here. Leon? Miles, I was just about to go in there looking for you. You're right after that huge mess last night? I'm good, but what's with a huge wound in your head? I ran into that gang of troublemakers yesterday, and we exchanged a few blows. Why aren't you at, at, in the tower? Those people barged in here after things quieted down, said Blacksteel would be taking over the maintenance work, and kindly escorted me out. They do anything to you? Glances at the mercenary setting guard. No. I feel like Jessica's probably trying to make up for the times where she just stood there and panicked. And that's why she's, you know, giving it her all here. Let's get out of here first. Not exactly the best place to talk. Just keep walking, just keep walking. Leave the doors open, Leon. We have to get back to the plate and to the plant later. How can anyone get in there with with their eyes all over the place? I know an abandoned path in, into the tower. Hasn't been used in years. Then let's get going. What's the rush? I need to catch I need to fetch some tools to clear the road, among other things. Need any help? Don't bother. I got everything here. Let's go. Boys, what you doing? <clears throat> There's so much dust here. Just how long has this path been here? Has to be at least 30 years since anyone last came through here. <clears throat> Who's there? You already called me over. There's no need to send an escort. Huh? Miles and Leon? What are you guys doing here? How'd you get them to let you in? Shh. Keep it down, Laura. We just want to take a look around. Won't be long. Fine, I'll let you know if the patrol comes around, but keep it quick. 
Lucky we ran into her and not anyone else. Huh. Yeah, Laura's cool. What are you doing? There's already fuel in there. So why throw in more stuff to burn? Remember what happened in July? So many people finally caved in and signed agreements to go to the frontier. How could I forget? Well, the bank's been putting on the pressure again. And this time, there's even more people talking about it. I asked a few families, and some of them are already wanting, waiting for the frontier convoys. Others still want to hold out here, but how can they keep up? Keep it up. Just get to the point, Miles. I'm planning to leave too. No one needs the Davistown mine no more. Even if they fix up the plate, no one's gonna care about us miners without jobs. We'll all end up leaving in disgrace anyhow. So you know. Come with me, Leon. Maybe you're right, but I still ain't leaving. Yep, that's the Leon I know. So is that why you wanted to come here, just to tell me that? No, I came here because I wanted to. Burn what needs burning, I guess, before I leave. Wait. But there's so many photos of people in that album. You plan on burning all those too? I ain't like you, Leon. I don't want to spend the rest of my life here. I figure you're just dead drunk when you said that last, last time. I had a notion of leaving this town, even when I was young. But knowing my parents could take care of all my younger siblings on their own, that's how I ended up stumbling into the mines in a stupor when I was 15. My eyes were scorched by the heat and sweat off the boiler, the boiler room, while the older guys bossed me around. I hated every goddamn minute of it, but could only press on through clenched teeth while thinking about my family. And by the time I realized it, all I knew was taking care of the furnace. Didn't know any other way to live. You never told me all this. Leon, it hurts when Benny said that he was leaving. But even then, I felt he made the right choice. So this has been a long time coming. Yeah, let him go before his, this plate ties him down. Maybe he can go to college. Ironforge City, Trimounts. Anywhere's fine as long as it ain't here. So you're saying I should be glad he got out in time? This land here has been squeezed dry, Leon. And those guys in the government are just gonna abandon it entirely. Or swoop in, or scoop in new soil from elsewhere. To them, we're just old straw refusing to rot away. Nothing but trouble. Well, what's that? Why is there a photo of your family in there? Leon reflexively moves to stick his hand to the furnace, but the photo vanishes in a puff of blue smoke before you can even feel the heat. Benny must have left that one in. I was too careful when packing it all up. Uh, sorry. It's fine. Don't know why I wanted to grab it in the first place. Wonder how long it'll take these blisters to heal without treatment or medicine. The flames of the furnace blaze brightly, and a few sparks sputter from within. They cool in the air and turn into smattering specks of gray, falling into the man's shoes. He sighs as he rubs the corners of his eyes, only to realize that the wetness that had been there has already dried up from the high temperature. Well, good luck to Miles on his journey. Sir, this must be a misunderstanding. I stayed home all night yesterday. Please cooperate with us, ma'am. Sir, please, can, can you just talk to your superiors into being a little flexible? How can I leave for, for the frontier midwinter with a child in tow? It seems you do know where we're taking you, so please, just cooperate. We don't want to have to resort to force. No! Hey, what are you doing? And which squad are you from? Jessica, Department of Equipment and Applied Technologies, temporarily transferred to BPRS's Liskarm squad. Oh, so you're that little princess I've heard so much about. An R to meet you. We're under orders to, to trace the source of last night's unrest. Locals with heavy depth are prime suspects, so that's where we're starting our investigation. Does your list include a single mom with a child too? Just following orders, besides. Even if she's innocent, we still have to... Re Repossess her mor mortgage property. Repossess mortgage properly. So this is why the boss had that word with me? Listen, I don't see what the boss has to do with this. But I do know you're hindering my work here. Don't you realize what you're doing is the exact same thing as those gangsters you arrested? Orders, princess. Just following orders. Don't make me repeat myself. Reporting. I found the woman. 
Arthur, please, I'm begging you. Let that lady go. What? I, I said let her go. We're not the same as you, princess. We need these paychecks to eat. Paychecks, paychecks. Is your paycheck? No, I mean, I, I'm saying, I, I can pay you. What's this now? Bribery? Raytheon's little lady is actually trying to bribe me? Yes, I'm just a stupid little rich girl who throws money at all her problems, okay? Guess there's no need for prote Guess there's no need for, for for professional integrity when you've got a family like that at your back, but me? I can only trade my conscience for cash at black steel. I'm glad you're so self-aware, but it really doesn't matter. Just stop making things difficult for us, lowly peasants. If you got money to burn, why not head over to the bank and pay off all their debts? You... Easy there, princess. Take your finger off the trigger, yeah? I know you lost your head for a bit there, but we still have to act according to our stations. Wh what? Jessica lowers her head to find that at some point, her hand had moved to her holster. When she sees what is probably an expression of both weariness and disdain on the mercenary's face, she ends up swallowing her apology as she turns around and runs towards the bank. And now, to fight. Now let's see how I want to put people here. And here is fine. And then here is fine for now. Ooh, I hate the explosion. But this be fine. Maybe not over there, exactly. Over here, yes. Okay, another person down. Look at that guy just walking around menacingly with his big blade. Then again, I would too if I had a giant blade. I can't blame him. If I was Blade Man, I'd be walking around menacingly. Just like me, for real, for real. Hmm, I kind of want to face her. Eh, might as well. Ooh, that stings! I probably should have brought a different healer for this, but it's okay. No regret. It's fine for now. Okay. More shield dude and dude with the... Uh, the giant blade. I put Silver Ash there. To assert some dominance. As one dude. Go get him, my boy. Slowly get him. I only thought that one guy's just facing the the heat. He's just standing there menacingly. Okay, there. Got him. Why is someone still outside this lane? Is that Jessica? What brings you here this hour, miss? I... I... I have some business here. L let's talk inside, shall we? What's going on, Sylvia? Didn't I tell you to keep the door closed at night? Recently, those people from Black Steel have been... Ah, so it was you, miss. I'm not sure why you paid us a visit at this hour, but how may I serve you? Don't... don't chase them out! Chase them out? Who exactly? The residents of Depp. Don't let Black Steel drive them out! Who's this coming from, Mr. Cliff? 
It's it's for me. Did I hear that right? If this is a joke, I'm not sure I get it. I'm serious. If you need someone to pay off their debts, then I'll I'll pay it all for them. At least enough to let them stay through the winter. Sending them to to the frontier now is no different from a death sentence. What holds sway in a bank are not the delusions of a mercenary, but honest to goodness gold certificates. I have the certs. This isn't a crazy fantasy. I can walk away. I mean, I can walk the walk and pay off the debts. I'm sorry, but the bank doesn't have time to indulge to indulge in your nonsense. I'm the daughter of Bernie, of Bernie Brinley, the CEO and largest shareholder of Raytheon Industries. Jessica freezes on the spot as soon as she finishes speaking. Ever since she joined Blacksteel, she has never once relied on her father or family to handle any setbacks she's faced. This is her one unwavering insistence. She did not want any special treatment because of her family name. But she had just unleashed the name of her father, as well as the one that sits on their family's crest. Bernie Brinley? You, you must be quite the big shot then, Miss Jessica Brinley. Spare me the sarcasm, ma'am. Just give me the number. Hmm. I can't give you the exact figure on the spot, but no matter. Sylvia here. Sylvia's here. And she's always been good with numbers. What are you standing... What are you standing there for, Sylvia? Tell her. Miss, I... She's a child of Brinley family. It should be a paltry sum to her. This... This isn't a good idea. Tell her, Sylvia. Currently, everyone's debt in Davistown roughly totals to 276 million thirds. If we calculate the interest until spring, the amount you'll need is roughly... Oh gosh, roughly a lot of money. A lot, a lot of money. How much? 28,450,000 gold certificates. 28 million? A small price for three months of peace and stability in the plate, no? That's not a small price. That's a lot of money. At a loss for words, Miss Brinley. I I don't have that much in hand right now, but but I, I can make ar the arrangements. 28,000, I mean 28 million, 450,000. So even a trust fund heiress can't with draw that much money in one go? I've learned something new today. I... I... No. Jessica. Sylvia, I... I... Jessica is learning harsh realities. It's like you can't buy... You can't buy everything you want. You're... Not from Davis Town. There's really... No need to do this for our sake. Listen to me. You should just leave. It... Even if you have enough for this time, could you afford the next time, or the one after that? Jessica's lips tremble as she fails to let even a single word out. She knows Sylvia is not being wry, just staying, but just stating the facts. The long string of numbers in her account can ensure a carefree lifetime for her, but it isn't enough to guarantee even a month's stability for the people on this plate. Ooh! Ooh, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Ooh, I hope your stream went by well. Any fun cards pulled? Hi, hi. Hello, hello. She thinks back to her father's earnest reminders to always act within her means and to weigh the pros and cons before doing so. Welcome, welcome. And thank you, thank you. But she never learned to and thus has no achievements to her name. Man, poor Jessica. Jessica's learning harsh reality. <laughs> really, Bug? Really? You're ruining the moment. Oh, man. Oh. Ooh, thank you. Let me type it. Yay, I hope you had good pool tonight.
Oh man, I can't wait to get my cards. Hehehe. <laughs> Especially that Noel SP. And now, sir, are you in there? Yes, what's the matter? He's here. Is it a good time for you to meet? Oh, no, no SP today, man. You gotta wait for that. Aloha Friday luck. <laughs> and aw, uh, thank you, thank you. I want to buy more cards, but at the same time, Kawaii Cons. I was gonna say next week, but no, it's this week. Brain not computing. Sir? Yes, I heard you. Bring him in. Hoo he he hoo. Oh, we're back at my favorite place the diner slash cafe. Jessica? Ain't you supposed to be back on, on the Black Steel Land ship? Helena, is Woodrow back yet? No. He said that he went out to see an old friend and isn't back yet. You don't look so good. What's wrong? Did something happen to Woody? And yes, I'm definitely going to Kawaii Con. I am super duper excited. I want to buy so much merch. Oh man, my arms are going to be sore. Also, I got... I got a ticket to see... For, like, the VIP ticket for fake type, because I couldn't resist. And that I'm super hyped for. No, he must have gone to our land ship to meet the boss. They're all friends, so... Maybe he can just... Maybe he can change his mind. The boss of Black Steel, he never told me he knew a big shot like that. And yes, fake type's gonna be there. As soon as I saw that they were announced as guests... And that they're gonna have a VIP ticket package. I'm like, you know what? I have to splurge. I gotta get it. Because I don't know when I'll have a chance like that again. Oh no. Oh, that is pain and suffering. I feel bad for some of my buddies who are gonna go. Because I, I'd want us all to enjoy fake type together. But they got work. So can only go Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> I'm like, bruh. Oh, that's... that really sucks. Since I don't have work on Friday because it's Good Friday. But I guess others do, so I'm like, oh man. It's like, I'll enjoy it for all of us. Cries. Doesn't he have a photo of him and some other Sancta? Photo? That rings a bell. But it ain't always locked away at this... in his drawer. How did you manage to, to take a look? That... that's not important. What's important is that the three in the photo were all smiles, right? Are you sure Woody went to look for the man in the photo? So you do know something about them. I don't know much about Woody's time in the Revolutionary War, and even less about the people in that photo. But back then, it was your boss who made the choice that led to Woody and the other man getting captured by the enemy and locked up in Camp Collis. Oh, that does not sound good. Is that an interminate cap? You didn't know? Well, it's ancient history. No official would ever bring it up, so of course, you youngins wouldn't know about it. It was a POW camp built by the Victorian Army during the Colombian Revolutionary War. And what went on in there was appalling. I'm talking torture. Torture? Yeah, for every 10 that went in, only one made it out. So, Jessica, who'd ever call someone who left them to run at a place like that an old friend? Jessica recalls the brown identification document. She suddenly realizes that the document's color was not just a random shade of brown, but the color of dried blood. Oof, this is even more oof. Ooh. Get that preparation done and enjoy your stream. Sir, are you in there? Yes, what's the matter? He's here, sir. Is it a good time for you to meet? Yes, just bring him in. May I sit? Of course. We have chairs, Woody. Sorry, got used to sitting on the ground these past two years. 
I forgot I can sit on chairs without getting beat up. Autumn 1019, Columbia. Camp call us. Oh, it's their younger selves. Calling me here. Got something to say to me? I thought you'd be the one full of questions from me. No, just one. Why don't you back me up three years ago? The situation changed after you left. Once the enemy encirclement suddenly tightened around our, our right flank, I had no choice but to abandon the original rescue plan and conserve our forces. You're gonna write it off with just that understatement. You devised a rescue plan, sent me as a decoy, and in the end, you didn't even rescue me. The circumstances compelled me to take responsibility for my men. Don't give me that with that face that you don't care. Why are you so obsessed with my expressions, Woody? You've been scrutinizing my face since the moment I stepped in. Since when did Sansa ever need to pay attention to body language? What's going on, Woody? It became a habit after he passed. After all, ain't no other Sansa in, in here. When did he die? The document only has one dead stamped in here. And the rest aren't even recorded. I can't remember the details. Didn't have a calendar or a watch. Probably last year, early spring, no summer. I saw a pansy outside, outside the barbed, the barbed wired fence that day. Sheesh. What happened? I wonder what they're gonna play. Actually, I don't know if they released. Like, a set list. But no matter what, oh, it's gonna be fun. Like, heck, let me even see what my ticket says. You know, I'm curious. Let me check that out real quick. Doo -doo -doo. My fake type ticket be hiding from me. It is... here. Here it be. Okay, so I just have... Well, I'm not even sure. Oh, my email says that I have a fake type VIP ticket. And that I have a nice QR code for the people to scan once in there. And see what happens. I I kind of forget what my ticket's gonna... Is even for. I just saw a fake type VIP and I'm like, yo, I gotta do it. Oh, and for ticket fake... F-A-K-E I'm super hyped Whatever it's for, it's gonna be great <laughs> I should have remembered what was even on that thing, but no I'm just like, I... You know, I'm probably gonna regret not getting it, so boop And then not remembering whatever else is there And let's see At first, he was burning hot he was mumbling nonstop, eyes wide open, and he was grabbing my sleeve like a lifeline, like he wanted me to tell me something. So I moved closer to make out what he was trying to say. And what was it? Dunno didn't hear. He let go of my sleeve, his eyes still open, pupils all dilated, pitch black, like they could suck in everything around him. Woody, so why, why, why didn't you come? The man turned his head, and with a blank stare, returns to the mercenary's returns the mercenary's gaze. The black of his pupils incessantly spreads, circulates, and rotates, as if trying to swallow up everything in the surroundings. As the mercenary's faces the other man's glare, he feels as if a hook is extended out from out of nowhere, piercing through his ankle and relentlessly dragging him into the black vortex. Ah, what a flashback. And now it's the reunion. So, what do I call you now? Heard you go by a different name. Anything's fine. I was expecting you sooner, Woody. After what happened last night, I had so many things on my plate and so many friends to help out. If you need any help, you can always let me know. Be it cash or manpower. Wow. I'm surprised that... 
Cliff's actually offering that. But then again, he did say friend. Thanks, Cliff. But no thanks. Hope is only help when it's on time. But coming from you, it's always overdue. <gasps> Cliff, you're late. Right, it's always best to get things done in a timely manner. So, what are you doing here? Can't an old friend start with how do you do? It's not as simple as old friends between us. What made you think we'd be acting like friends when we saw each other again? Then what would you rather be treated as? Anything else, really? No need for sarcasm, Woody. I don't even see the point anymore. We're old now. Our hair has gone full white. This past decade, I've seen my friends getting one health problem after another and been attending funeral after funeral. Just meeting one that's still alive is hard enough. You'll live so far away. And I doubt I'll ever see you in... I doubt I'll ever see your obituary in the papers, so I came to see you personally. You shouldn't have bothered. Hey, no place for you at my funeral anyhow. That's a real shame, Woody. Didn't we make a pact to speak at each other's funerals all those years ago? I'm sure plenty of others would be happy for you to speak at, at theirs, but mine, just forget about it. I hope you're not thinking I'm a fan of funerals. I only attend them because it's my old buddies in the coffins. This, this talk. Wah. Ooh. And yes, there really was a roller coaster for the opening. <laughs> but still worth it in the end. And where do you sit? Among the friends and family? Rarely, unless the relatives ask me to. I usually stand back and watch the whole thing from the distance. Why? Afraid that you can't bear the pain? Pain is a relatively private experience for the other races. My best guess is that we can only deal with it on our own. Enough playing like we're friends, alright. I'll put it bluntly for you. I buried him on the hillside behind the POW camp. Have you ever visited him? Unfortunately, no. I haven't found the time. You haven't changed a bit. Big oof. So why would Woody go looking for him? It's my fault. I asked him to. What, you? I thought... On account of their past friendship, maybe my boss could be more lenient on everyone here. Sure, Jessica, sure. Ah, uh, any top chases I was hoping to get? Well, my all-time favorite member inside of Hololive is Korone. So that would have been, like, the ultimate goal. Someday, someday. How could you be so naive, Jessica? Would he... he... I... Forget it. Now that it's come to this, I don't need to hide it from you. I'm planning to leave this plate and head to the frontier. Helena, no, you're not gonna leave this plate and go to the frontier. You're coming to my Rhodes Island. I will hire you as my personal chef. Please, Helena. Please. Please, ma'am. You too? Yeah, my regulars are all getting sent off one after the other. And only us old folks are left. What's the point in keeping the diner open? Stay with me, Helena. Please. I'll eat your cooking every day. Besides, just look at the holes in my walls after last night's fighting. I don't have I don't have it in me to patch them up anymore. Oh yes, I saw that merch. I want everything. But oh decisions, decisions, too many good stuff coming out. I cry. I've invested so many years into this place, and enough is enough. Sorry, I am so sorry. What are you apologizing for, Jessica? Because I didn't do anything. Nothing at all. I'm sorry. I really am. Don't blame yourself. You're the last person who should be doing that. You're an outsider, and the plate was on its last legs. Just get back to your friends. You have your own life to live. No need to work yourself to the bone on our account. And the check you gave me back then, take it back. But that's the only thing I can do for you. Take it. 
When do you plan to leave, Helena? Not too soon, I reckon. Still just say my proper goodbye, after all. Jessica. Jessica, tell Helena to work for me. Well, I know that Helena is the welfare for this event, but still. Helena, Helena, my love. Please, I'll hire you. Hmm. Yeah, Jessica's basically like, I'm here, and have if I have the means to help slash save people, then there's no excuses not to. That's basically what Jessica's doing right now. It's like, but Jessica, you can't just throw money at things to make the, the problems go away. That doesn't always work. Jessica shuts the restaurant door behind her and stands in a daze on the doorstep. The check balled up in her fist. She suddenly lets loose a kick on a pile of snow by the road, sprinkling flakes of white down onto her head and wetting her hair. Some land on her forehead, cooling her burning heat. She retrieves a tape recorder from her bag and begins re rewinding it, playing back the recording she has heard so many times. But you're just a naive little heiress. What, what can you even do? This thought fills her mind as she walks slowly back towards the giant black land ship. Anyone hear that? Save us. Those... Those Sark has suddenly climbed up the plate. Many people are dead, and the rest of us are hiding in the basement of City Hall. True! You know that is very, very true. It would be cool if Ark Knights had Vice Choice cards. Cause you have Blue Archive, Can Why not? Heck, not just Blue Archive. You know, I was very, 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 very tempted for some of the other cards too, like Azura Lane's cards. Yes. Like that one was super tempting too. But oh, if they if they did make Ark Knights cards, I would have to buy them. But then I'd be scared of my luck. I definitely wanted a Mia card, just because Mia is my bestie. We tried to con contact Lindinium's garrisons, but no one's replied. No one at all. I don't care who it is, but if you can hear this message, please, please help us. Your only hope. Why did I even want to be a mercenary? I can't save other people's lives or even their livelihoods. Where have you been all, all day, Jessica? We couldn't get in touch. I went... It's nothing. I, I just went for a walk. Jessica just wants to be a hero. What happened? Oh, if I got a W card, I'd be so freaking happy. But then I'd be like, W, if you let me get you in a card farm, let me summon you in the game. Maybe next time she'll be nice enough to let me summon her. Oh, W, I even bought her outfit in the store. As in... Oh yeah, she got her alpha too in real life. Oh shoot! W, W, I'm already a big simp for you. Please, ma'am. I forgot about that for a second. Captain, I... I... Really have no idea what, why we're doing this mission. Did... You see something? I saw her colleagues evicting deaf-saddled residents in their homes. And putting them on convoys bound for the frontier. Huh? Hey, teacher's pet. Now's not the time to start to be staring at your communicator. Did you even hear what she said? I did. And I have news even more absurd than that. Orders from above. We'll be in charge of security at the bank. We have to stand watch 24-7. And it's up to us to figure out our shift rotation. What? Working security for the bank? Correct. Huh. This is so... goddamn ridiculous. 
Jessica, you... Like, sorry, Jessica, now you gotta work there. The ultimate ooh for Jessica. The man for the rest of the event. Yeah, I'll finish it tomorrow for sure. For sure, for sure. And heck, since it's still kind of early in the night, I'm pretty sure there's still food for me. I'm gonna be so sad though if... If dad ate all the chicken enchilada. Like, come on, at least leave me like a tiny piece. Leave me at least a bite's worth. Though at the same time, it would be hilarious if, he, if they left me like... A, a, Legit, just a bite. I'll be like, Dad, please. Please give me the food. Like, if you don't say that for me, I'm not gonna bring you back snacks. I'm not gonna bring you back goodies. But now I should be fine. Only... Actually, only like... Mom, Dad, and I would actually eat the stuffs. The others would be probably... Too lazy to even grab any food. Which is funny. But yay. Oh, hello, hello. You got here right at the end. Since I'm gonna go off to get some food now. Chicken enchilada, black beans and rice. Mmm, yummy, yummy. What a good meal I can look forward to. Super excited for that. So with that being said, thank you for stopping by the stream. I hope everyone has a great rest of the day and epic gotcha luck. Cause oh my goodness, I'm so happy that I actually got Jessica, but at the same time she cost me everything. But you know, it's okay, she's worth it, she's cute. Cause I like Jessica Alter, she's fine. I haven't used her yet, but I like her. But yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I'm gonna enjoy some food, I gotta use up. I gotta form so much inside of FGO's lotto event. I gotta use all the time I have since tomorrow is a holiday. Oh, gotta love holidays. No, no work, no school. Everything's happy. So I'll see you guys later. Bye bye. Woohoo!